Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and thanks for joining me again. This week we're changing things up a little bit and we're going to explore some twangy Telecaster tones on a country lead study. We're going to be soloing over the chord changes to Ray Price's classic country song, Crazy Arms, and I'm going to show you some must-know country Telecaster licks and tricks that you can apply to those changes. These kinds of chord progressions are extremely common in country music and all it really boils down to is a 1-4-5 in the key of E. As I'm sure you're well aware by now, I do have a Patreon where you can get hold of the lesson materials for this. If you don't want to do the Patreon thing, you can buy them at the Gumroad link instead. Either way, I really appreciate your support, so thank you very much. Right, so let's make a start on this. We'll begin by learning the changes. We're in the key of E, and our intro kicks off with the 1, the 5, back to the 1. Then we're into the A section. Four to the one to the five back to the one four to the one five one and we repeat all of that finish the little 151. One. Very common stuff in the country world. The lesson materials for this will include my backing track as well as tab and notation in Guitar Pro and PDF formats. So our first lead line kicks off over the intro on that E chord and we play this. <laughs> So I'm starting off with an E major pentatonic kind of a run, nice and low down on these bass strings. So these half bends on the 4th fret of the D, 4th fret of the A, 2nd fret of the low E. And in between these runs I'm doing these chicken picked sounds, a muted upstroke on the string. Walking up to a B while we're playing over the B7, and then resolving back to the E, whereby now we're forming an entire E major open chord. Then I'm messing around with these major sixth kind of sounds. Very rockabilly, very country. Reminds me of players like Eddie Cochran, where you're taking an E chord and you're adding the little finger to what would be the sixth interval, the C sharp note at the second fret of the B string. So here's our intro. Now going back to that E major pentatonic run we did a moment ago, one thing we should mention is pick these bass strings near the bridge for a bit of extra twang compared to... Our first phrase of the A section is a mixture of major pentatonic and minor pentatonic basically. We're starting with this run up using the sixth again over the E chord and then chromatically walking to the major third. That alone is a really common bit of country vocabulary that I would really recommend working on. But then we're thinking minor pentatonic or E blues scale. Surrounding the major third from either side. And putting in another little bit of chicken picking. Those are nice little percussive accents to throw in, kind of as and when you choose to. And then we're coming down the E minor pentatonic. Bringing in the blues note. And then finishing on hybrid picked A and E, so the second fret of the G string and the open top E. That lands right on the chord change to A, so we're just grabbing the root. Now we play. But this is changing back to the E chord. So this last note is going to grate pretty nastily. 
against the G sharp, the major third. So what we're going to do is we're going to get behind the nut here and bend that open G up to the G sharp note. So it harmonizes with the chord here. Now we're still on an E chord and we're going to play this. Which has a bit of a Clarence White vibe about it. We're thinking E major within the C shape. We can also be thinking of our E major pentatonic scale in that zone. Or even just our E major scale. Point being, you should have all of those elements down. You want to be able to dissect a chord into these various levels. These kinds of ascending scale runs are pretty much stock country music motifs that you want to throw in and get some good use out of to add a bit of authenticity to your playing. In this case we're playing... But you're just as likely to hear this kind of thing... Or... Notice how there's a certain rhythmic patter to these phrases. They all start on the offbeat. One and two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and two, and a three, four, and one, two. Adding that kind of a rhythm into just a simple ascending scale run is just going to legitimize your country lines that little bit more. And again, we're throwing in a little bit that chicken picking. Picking a muted B string and then using my second finger to pluck the top E and then picking with the plectrum back on the B string. Try using as much hybrid picking as you can throughout this piece. Now we're looking ahead to the B7 chord on the horizon and we're going to play this run. Where we're still on E currently, we're playing the fifth of the E chord, but then I'm really just thinking B7 and making a, a B line, no pun intended, for the major third here. So I'm going to approach it chromatically and then grab the root on top, so I've got that nice classic sixth interval of the third and the root, and then I'm going to walk down so now you've got the nine and the flat seven works well on a B7, right? Keep walking down, again we're thinking B major there B7 there resolving to the E chord again. Minor to major third, root on top. Now we really do want to keep exploiting the twang of these open strings whenever possible. So if we stay down here. And we use as many open strings as possible, make it sound really jangly and ringy. And that phrase again is constructed out of elements of both major and minor pentatonic. We're on the E, thinking E7 and getting back to the A before playing this A major triad and then finishing up on a half bend at the third fret of the top E again thinking E minor pentatonic or E minor blues scale now we're back on our E chord and we're going to play this So again, just E major pentatonic scale to start with. And then we're thinking of triads here. I'm thinking E major triad within a C shape. I want to end up here. I'm going to start a whole tone below and chromatically walk up to it. And now I want to end up on the A shape, again for the E chord. I want to end up with this sixth interval here between the fifth and the third. And yet again, I go down a whole tone and walk chromatically into it. grabbing this top note and letting everything ring together and then going sus4 and then playing this which is a real bit of bluegrass vocabulary the sort of thing I picked up from playing a lot of Tony Rice stuff you know a lot of people think about the minor third as a good way to get to your major third which it is but it also sounds great if you go the other way and come down to your second or your ninth and then we're signing the phrase off with this. Common bit of rockabilly vocabulary there. Very Charlie Christian as well. Just thinking an E major triad, sliding in from minor to major third, 
adding the sixth along the way as we climb up to the root. So that's the first of the two solos done. Okay guys, please do show some support to my channel if you want me to keep making these videos. I have a Patreon, and I also have the Gumroad link if you'd like to purchase lesson materials. But you can also show your support for free by simply liking, subscribing, commenting, and sharing. Also hit that notification bell. These things do make a big difference. If you check out those links in the description, you'll see that I've also now added the option to book a private lesson with me over Zoom. The booking process is so beautifully simple and streamlined. You just click that link, and it'll take you to an interactive calendar, where you'll see which slots I have available. You can claim your slot, you can pay in advance, and it'll automatically generate a Zoom link for the appointment. We don't have to figure out time zones, it's all taken care of. Yeah, so if you do fancy a one-on-one -on -one session, or if you have any particular questions you'd like to ask, don't hesitate, those slots are going fast. Let's see what Louis's up to under the desk here, in his cosy little igloo bed. I'm tired, Louis. Not liking the wintry weather, are you? I think he's too tired to speak. Poor little lad. Now we kick the second solo off with another rockabilly Charlie Christian style lick. We're playing the 14th fret on the B string with the 15th fret of the top E. And we do these jarring upstrokes. And we bend the second string very slightly. Now these two notes we're playing over the E chord would be the 13 and the sharp 9, or the flat 3. But in some ways they relate better to the four chord, the A7, where you'd have the major third and the flat seven. So for me personally, I'm thinking more along those lines. I'm thinking that I'm playing two intervals here from the four chord and sort of forcing them to work over the one. They sound really cool. Then this little bit of major pentatonic before switching gears back to the minor pentatonic or the E blues scale. All of that is minor pentatonic there, with the flattened fifth. But we're doing this thing where we pick two strings together again, double stops. And then we're resolving to the A7, where we've got that sixth interval again, the major third and the root. Chucking in another little bit of chicken picking, just the muted G string this time on an upstroke, and then descending the E minor blues scale, before going to this double stop of notes from an A major triad, and then hammering on to an E major triad, but trilling back and forth between the open and first fret of the G, which would be the minor to the major third. Now we replay our intro phrase, but instead of down in this register, we're going to grab it all the way up here. Doing a little bit of chicken picking in between each time. E major pentatonic here, then we're moving into a B7 chord, and we're going to play this phrase. So we're playing this double stop here, 10th fret of the B with the 9th fret of the G, bending the G string a whole tone, and then coming down, hammering on from minor to major third of the B7, all while this little finger stays where it is, playing the flattened 7. And then we grab the root. By this point, we've collected the root, the third and the flat seven of our B7 chord. We're gonna add the root on top again, and then play the flat seven. Now we're gonna play, which are these pedal steel sounding ideas. These are things I picked up from listening to Danny Gatton. I've never really looked too deeply into these note choices here. I just think of them as nice textures to use over a B chord where really we've got the top of a B major triad, and then the second here, or the nine, so you could think of it as a B major add nine kind of sound. And then things swap around a little bit here, you've got the root, you've got a nine, or the two again, and then a sus four. To me this sounds great when it then resolves up a fourth, like it does here, to the E chord. So in that way, I guess mentally I'm categorizing this as the sort of thing I would play over a dominant chord, which would then resolve up a fourth. Now we're on that E chord, but we're heading towards an A major in a moment. So I'm going to imply E7 along the way by doing this. E major pentatonic, and then grab the flat seven, the D note, and then walking in 
to the major third of A. And again, a bit of that major pentatonic stuff. So I guess what we have here is B7, E, E7, A, back to E. Then again we're going to move up to the 12th fret and bring in a bit of that Charlie Christian flavour again. Over the E chord. And then we're thinking B7. Walking into the major third from a whole tone below chromatically again. That's been a bit of a reoccurring theme all the way through, hasn't it, really, if we think about it? Playing the root, the two, and the three, but filling in chromatically between the two and the three. So you end up with the root, the two, the flat three, and then the three. That's a very common thing in country music. There it is on the E chord. Learn that all over the place. It's a good way of getting into your next chord change. In this case here, using it to get into the B chord or the B7. And then we're grabbing a phrase that we stole from Jimmy's Blues. Don't know if you've checked out my lesson on that, the Jimmy Rivers piece, but if not, go check it out. This phrase comes from that solo. Then we're back to the E. So at the end there we have E, B7, back to the E. And then we're going to play Probably one of the most common country endings you could think of, but a really beautiful one, and one that's good to work on, good for your technique. We're going to play this walk up through the major pentatonic, and then grabbing two notes from an E major triad. This would be the 16th frets on the top E and the G string, hybrid picking them, moving the same thing down to the 11th fret, where now we're thinking B or B7. Then moving to the 12th fret, barring the top two strings with a little finger, and playing the 11th fret of the G and giving it a full step bend. So ending up in an E major triad essentially. So there we go, some essential vintage country flavoured tricks and tips and ideas. This stuff is my bread and butter really. It's very much like the stuff I play in my main gigging band. And I love it just as much as I love the jazz stuff. And really, when you get down to brass tacks, there's a huge amount of overlap between those styles. I mean, check out players like Hank Garland, Jimmy Rivers and George Barnes, for example. Those guys are equally comfortable playing jazz and country. And I often jokingly say to my students that really the only difference between these two styles is the type of hat that you wear when you play them. The vocabulary really is very similar, even if the delivery is slightly different. We're getting a bit more twangy, a little brighter, and of course more string bends thrown in. It forms the perfect little trifecta of styles, doesn't it, really? When you've got jazz, country and blues, all these three points connect in a beautiful way. So for a bit of tone talk, as always, it's pretty simple, really. Uh, this is just my Telecaster using the bridge pickup the whole time, plugged into my newly acquired Tone King Imperial Mark II amp, which I'm really enjoying. I'm on the rhythm channel and I have it set volume at four, treble at four, bass at four and the reverb at six. The amp is then running into the Universal Audio Ox box to help me attenuate the volume a little bit and to make recording things that much easier. I'm using a good old Jim Dunlop Jazz 3 Plectrum and my strings are 10 gauge DR Pure Blues, Pure Nickel strings. So do check out the players I mentioned earlier, Hank Garland, George Barnes and Jimmy Rivers. But on the more country side of things, do listen to players like Roy Nichols, Clarence White, Danny Gatton, Jim Campolongo, Marty Stewart and Kenny Vaughan as well as bluegrass players like Doc Watson, Tony Rice and Dan Crary. Also make sure to do plenty of listening to good old time country music and absorb some of that flavour. We're talking the Carter family, the Leuven brothers, Stanley brothers, Flatt and Scruggs, Hank Williams and many more. And although we've mentioned Jim Campolongo, we should also mention a couple of other modern telly twangers. Joe Walsh, George Harrison, Mike Bloomfield and Steve Cropper. These guys knew how to deliver notes with a sting on that bridge pickup of a Telecaster. Okay guys, thanks so much for watching. Do comment down below with your thoughts or any questions you might have. And I'll see you at the same time again next week. Alright, take care.